Welcome to the Know Yourself channel, where making astrology known and understandable is the number one priority. I'm the Scottish astrologer, and in this video, I'm going to discuss what you need to know and the importance of the trigons, which is triplicity, okay? Okay, there are four trigons that contain in each three zodiacal signs of a particular element. Now first, the fiery trigon contains the three fire signs, which are Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. The earthy trigon contains the three earth signs, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. The airy trigon contains the three air signs, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. And last but not least, the watery trigon contains the three water signs of Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. Now these triplicities or trigons are of the greatest importance in astrology, okay, as whatever sign is rising at the ascendant at the moment of birth affects you very potently in regards to the trigons, as this governs the very nature, character, personality, mind and spirit of the individual, depending upon the particular element of the sign in question and the class of the zodiac sign and what I mean by that is whether it is cardinal, fixed or mutable. The elements are important as we have two higher and spiritual elements which are fire and air, fire being the highest representing the sun and air just below that, okay. Then we have the lower and what we'd call more material elements, the material elements, which are water and earth. Now earth is the lowest and most material element as water covers the earth, so it's slightly higher than earth, okay? And the elements do indeed affect the nature of a person in general, with fire and air being more spiritual in general in their nature, uh, when water and earth are more materialistic in general in their natures. And I am not saying fire and air element people can't be really materialistic because they can, I have seen it. And that's why the whole natal chart really needs to be taken into consideration also, okay? Moving on, everyone really needs to take into consideration that everything in the universe varies in its level of spirituality and that's including electrical and magnetic forces okay which are how the planets etc affect humanity and everything else now to elaborate on what i mean about everything varies in spirituality for instance fire is a spiritual element and there are three fire signs aries leo and sagittarius <laughs> And they vary in spirituality, as Aries ascendant people will always move on a higher plane, spiritually and mentally, than those with Leo or Sagittarius ascendants. And outwardly, Aries ascendant, uh, and I would also include Aries sun signs personally, show their superiority through an intellectual point of view in nature. They will be quick in action and fast at making decisions in general. And they will be fiery, mental, okay? People. Aries is the highest of the fire signs and all signs as it is cardinal fire. Fire being the highest, most spiritual of the elements and cardinal being first and angular. And also Aries being the very first sign of the zodiac. Then we have next Leo, who move on the emotional and sensitive planes uh, in comparison to Aries moving on the intellectual, you know, planes, mental and intellectual planes, very different. So Aries intellectual planes, mental planes, that's where they move the highest. And Leo basically moves on a lower plane of the emotions and the sensitive plane, okay? They will generally have a nature which is chiefly sensitive and fiery and impulsive and hasty. They tend to act, okay, without thinking or act in the moment 
so to speak, okay? When they are under their highly dominantly influential emotional natures, okay, they will act in the moment without thinking. Aries rules the head and Leo rules the heart, and we can see Aries acts with their heads and Leo acts with their hearts, okay? If you enrage a Leo into passional fury, they are engulfed by a by an excitement, okay? That's the best way to describe it. They're engulfed by an excitement which makes it near on impossible for them to know when to stop, let's say in a fight for instance. Whereas an Aries, who is equally capable of all the violence and temper of Leo, never become excited, okay? There is always a method to the madness of an Arian. And lastly, we have Sagittarius, which is the lowest, which just means the most external and outwardly and material of the fire triplicities. Sagittarians move and live spiritually and mentally on the lowest plane of the fire emanation, whereas externally and outwardly and to the eyes of others, they seem to move on the very highest, okay, because they are warm, active, and sympathetic. They're also benevolent, generous, ambitious, and truly jovial people. These people in general do as the crowd does, okay, and are highly influenced by the social trends of their times. Whereas an Aries has a true mind of their own, okay, and they like to stay away in general from all the mad trends, etc. of their times. But Sagittarius rising people will be totally incapable of grasping any form of the higher mental and metaphysical studies like what we're doing now, unless another configuration on the natal chart permits that to be a possibility, okay? So, you can know, have Sagittarius rising, but another aspect on your chart that makes it actual possible for you to be able to grasp metaphysical studies, okay? But even with that, even then, grasping these concepts will be very, very difficult uh, for the person with a Sagittarius rising on their chart. Now, externally, outwardly, as perceived by the eyes of the masses, these people are considered to move on the very highest plane of existence, okay, when internally the opposite is true. Now I hope I have made it clear that everything varies in spirituality, even zodiac signs of the same highly spiritual element. Now, all I have just explained in regards to the fire trigon is also the same for the air, water and earth trigons, in the sense that the cardinal or first sign of all the other trigons is the highest manifestation of the particular element it belongs to. So for instance, the water trigon, the first sign, because it's cardinal, cardinal water, it's cancer. So that's the highest emanation of the water. Of the air, the highest is Gemini, you know. Oh sorry, the highest is Libra, and etc, etc. It moves through like that. So... Just to give you a rough understanding of that, what I've explained about the fire, you know, with the chief top one being the highest emanation, the same is true for air, water, earth, all the same. Now, where am I? Right. But again, the whole natal chart, okay, again, I need to stress this, you need to study the whole natal chart, okay, as if there is a certain aspect coming to the Ascendant by particular planets, etc., the general effects of what I have just went over can be offset, okay? So again, don't take what I'm saying as pure gospel, it's generalisation. The whole natal chart always needs to be studied because a planet can always be offset in the Ascendant and offset what I've just said. So please do take the whole natal chart into consideration always. Now the most important thing uh, that must be kept in mind about the trigons, okay, when working with them is that the fiery trigon manifests itself in the courageous, commanding, aggressive and combative planes of action. 
the earthy trigon manifests itself, okay, in the obedient, okay, laborious, plodding, and patient planes of action. The airy trigon manifests itself in the musical, philosophical, uh, volatile, artistic and aspiring planes of action and last but not least the watery trigon manifests itself in the submissive changeable timid romantic and dreamy planes of action again i need to keep stressing this a natal chart must be studied uh, but deep down at the core of the person's qualities depending on the rising sign they will be endowed with some of the qualities i just mentioned and even still, these qualities may only manifest themselves in a particularly difficult situation. For instance, in the threat of violence. Now, in the threat of violence, a fiery trigon person, who usually isn't aggressive or combative, etc., will see these qualities manifest at that particular time and, and situation. Whereas in the exact same situation of violence, or threat of violence, a watery trigon person who isn't really timid and submissive may see these qualities manifest, okay, in this particular situation. Now, I hope I have made everything clear regarding the trigons or triplicities, because the trigons are more important than most people understand, you know, and the trigons are usually overlooked uh, by modern astrologers, which is a shame. Because as I hope I have shown, they are a key part of reading a natal chart, okay? Like a true key part. And they have to be studied, they have to be looked at, they have to be taken into consideration. And they must not be overlooked. And I encourage everyone to truly study the triplicities and everything I've just said on their natal charts, okay? Now moving on, they are is triplicity of the planets as well okay so how there's four different how there's four different triplicities the fire water air and earth triplicities okay they contain the fire triplicity contains all the fire signs water contains all the water signs etc okay so for the three signs aries leo and sagittarius of the fire trigon there is two planets which are said to be in their triplicity, okay? So they rule these certain triplicities. Uh, one for day and one for night. Now, I'm going to go over the triplicities of the planets according to Ptolemy, okay? Uh, according to Ptolemy, the day ruler of the fire trigon, or triplicity, is the sun, and the nighttime ruler is Jupiter. For the Earth triplicity, the daytime ruler is Venus, the nighttime the Moon, the air, uh, sorry, for the Earth triplicity, Venus is the daytime ruler, Moon is the nighttime ruler. For the air triplicity, Saturn is the day ruler, Mercury is the night ruler. And for the water triplicities, Mars is both the day and the night ruler, okay? Now there's other systems uh, that are slightly different, one of them being the Dorifian system, is slightly different to Ptolemy, okay, so check out all the other systems if you want, go with what the one you think is feels most right, to me it's Ptolemy, you know, but you might feel different. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video, okay, I, I apologise I have not posted a video in a while, uh, I've got myself a new job and I've been busy with work etc, uh, but please share this video, okay. If you found this info useful, okay, please give the video a like, it's a great big help to me. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please do not forget to hit the bell at the right hand side of the subscribe button. Thanks again, and I will see you soon with another informative video. Thanks again.